the friends of UNH Women's Hockey present Coach's Corner with head coach Brian McCloskey. Well, with just three weekends left and six games, the regular season has turned the corner and it's headed down the home stretch. Hi, welcome to the friends of UNH Women's Hockey's Coach's Corner. I'm Phil Kincaid, along with head coach Brian McCloskey. And it was a light weekend this past weekend, probably the lightest weekend I'll see for the rest of the year, as the Wildcats headed down to Boston College, where they posted an impressive 2-1 to victory to improve their Hockey East record to 14-0-1. Coach, for the players or for the fans who didn't have a chance to see that game, give us a rundown. Well, it was a uh, – BC uh, has really, uh, I think, done a good job, Kitty King, uh, in my opinion, watching her team down there on, on Saturday. Uh, very uh, strong skating team, which we knew, but they played excellent defense. Molly Schaus, uh, easily one of the top goalies in the NCAA. Uh, women's game today uh, played played outstanding. It was it was a very uh, interesting game. We we were I don't want to know if, I don't know if I want to say we control play, but we generated a lot of quality chances. Uh, but BC was kind of bend don't break, you know, and uh, we were able to jump up one nothing late in the first period on, on an excellent goal, uh, which is the kind of goal we had talked about. You're gonna you're gonna have to create or generate against a goalie like Shouse, where uh, uh, Steph Marty uh, collected a rebound and was able to to beat Shouse from in tight because Molly anything she sees she was stopping for sure that night and uh, BC you know so we got the one nothing lead and then uh, we're able to jump up two uh, one after they had scored uh, a nice goal by Kelly Stack um, but uh, we were able to to match that goal in the second period and get and get, it, get it back on top 2-1 and it was uh, a back and forth third period we had our chances to open it up but they had chances to tie as well so um, you know it was a uh, you know and, and I should say that the go ahead and ultimately winning goal was another you know Jen Hitchcock bowling her way off the wall uh, Leah Craig following her to the net and jamming home a rebound so uh, those are playoff quality goals. I mean, that's the kind of uh, offense you're going to have to generate because in, in playoff time, uh, you're going to face great goaltenders and uh, teams that are well coached, good defensively. The opportunity to create uh, great scoring chances off of rush or uh, transition is going to be more limited. So uh, overall, very happy with uh, where the team sits right now. And as you said, we're heading into the home stretch. So we've got some big games coming up. Well, right. If you take a look at the national statistics, you have the most potent offense uh, in the nation right now. But I think what we forget about, as you mentioned before, getting down to crunch time, it's where the defense is going to be the most important thing. And let's not forget that this team's only allowed 10 goals in the last 10 games. It seems that equally strong has been the defense. I think our defense is one of our keys. I mean, when I look at the teams that we've faced that I, I'm most impressed with, uh, uh, Harvard for sure, St. Lawrence, uh, the, their defense, uh, Mercyhurst's got a good defense. Uh, the, the teams with solid defense, not and truthfully, not just the blue line, but you need to have great blue liners, kids who can handle the puck, not put it into places where it's going to create problems for you. Uh, and and we, we're one of those teams, uh, obviously, would include in that group, and that's the difference. And you're absolutely right, Wisconsin's another team. I mean, the teams that are not giving up a lot of goals, uh, either have a combination of great goaltending and quality team defensive play and quality blue liners um, or some variation of those. But it's not just your goalie, and, and uh, we've had, uh, I think, outstanding goaltending this year. It, it's the team as well. It's a team thing, and, and if you ask any of the goalies, they'll tell you that. So, I mean, as we head into the stretch, the play of team defense and, and obviously uh, our goaltending is going to be critical to – because you're going to be in a lot of one-goal games, Phil, and that's that's what playoff hockey is all about. Well, another key of playoff hockey is your special teams. And the Wildcats rank number one in power play and number one in penalty killing. You have the best special teams in the country, and certainly that must be encouraging at this point. Yeah, it is. I think it's been a strength of ours. But, of course, again, you get into these playoff situations where teams are going to prepare for you better. Um I have always believed over the course of a season, special teams will be uh, will, can make or break your season. And uh, this is clearly a year where our special teams have made a huge difference. I mean, uh, 
between not giving up hardly anything on the shorthand and generating fairly consistently goals on the on the man up, uh, it's created a margin of victory for us in, in a lot of the, a lot of big games. That being said, and and so you'd much rather be there than have special teams that are struggling for sure, uh, because they'll be critical, you know. And uh, we've seen it before. The the funny thing though is, of course, when you get into playoff hockey and down in the very stretch and stretch run here, uh, what you did before doesn't really matter, you know. And so uh, it's a game by game thing. We've got to continue to do well in those areas because if you have, a, you know, you can have great stats come into a game. Um, and go 0 for 6, and and the uh, opponent goes 1 for 4, and you could lose that game, and those stats really don't mean anything. So I, I, I think, but I think what's encouraging is over the course of a 30 to 34 game regular season schedule, we've exhibited tendencies that we're going to be very strong in those areas. Well, the team has a series of goals every season, and of course, that first goal is to win the regular season championship. That's just five points away, and there are four points on the board this weekend when Vermont comes to town. What are you expecting? Well, you know, Vermont uh, has done a great job of uh, blending a bunch of new faces in. Maybe doesn't show on their record. Uh, I think they're one of the more, you know, they're kind of playing a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot of pressure on them. Obviously, this year, not, not a whole lot expected. I'm not speaking from their coaching staff, but Tim's done a great job, I think, of beginning the beginnings of changing the culture there and turning it into a winning program which i'm convinced he'll do uh we're going to see a gritty hustling team they're not, they're not coming in here just to mail it in they're going to come in and, and be looking and i think they're a bit of a, a spoiler at this point for sure because they're not going to be in the playoffs but they're enthusiastic i've watched them on tape they play with a lot of energy um and and truthfully looking ahead we've got six uh games left I think what we'll be doing most this weekend and, and in the remaining two weekends of regular season play is we've got to focus on what we're doing. You know, yes, we have to pay attention to the, the opponent and, and some of their tendencies, but really right now I'm trying to zero in on what we're doing, what we're doing well, what we're not doing well, where we need to get better, uh, because ultimately uh, these games are a prelude to, to some really big games in three weeks' time. Coach, as always, thank you very much for your time. We'll be back next week when we'll take a look at what happened at that Vermont series and then look ahead to the final four games of the regular season.